Hi, I'm Jennifer and this is Kate. And today we're taking a look at 10 practical Catholic life skills that we think it's helpful for every Catholic to know. So for kids, teenagers, Catholics that are new to the faith or returning to the faith, these are skills that might have been forgotten over time or that they might have never been taught. So let's go ahead and take a look. Skill number one is how to contact a priest in case of an emergency. Now, hopefully we're never gonna have to do this, but it's good to know how just in case. The procedure will definitely vary from church to church, but it's always a good bet to start by calling the church office. At our church, we can call the office Monday through Friday during business hours if we need a priest. And then on the weekends and after hours, we can also call the church office. And at that time, there is a prompt, you know, press three if you have an emergency and you need a priest. So it's not a very hard thing to know how to do. And once you know, you're not gonna forget it, but it does give us a lot of Catholic people of mind to know that we're on it. If there's an emergency, we know what to do. Number two is where to get holy water. So holy water is such a powerful sacramental, which has so many uses, but not everyone might realize that you can get it for free at your church. So a lot of churches will have a holy water font that they use for baptisms or for blessing yourself on your way in and out of church but a lot of them also have a smaller holy water dispenser that you can use to just fill up a bottle of holy water to take home with you. Now you might have to look around for this dispenser a little bit, or you might have to ask someone where it is, but it's totally worth it. And we think that every Catholic should know this is an option. Number three is how to tell if your Bible is a Catholic one. Now, most of my students don't even realize there is a difference between the Catholic and Protestant Bibles. The Catholic Bible has the full set of books, 73, but the Protestant Bible is missing seven. That's on Martin Luther. So how do you tell if your Bible is Catholic? There are a couple of really easy ways. The first thing to do is just to look in the front of the book for the words nihil obstet and imprimatur. And those are Latin terms that just mean the Catholic Church has looked this Bible over. It is officially approved by the church. But sometimes it can be hard to remember those Latin terms. So I tell my students, just remember the words Big Mac. If you look in the table of contents of your Bible and you see that it has the books of 1st and 2nd Maccabees, you know for sure that that's a Catholic Bible. You will not find either of those books in a Protestant one. So easy to remember, Big Mac, Catholic. Catholic Bible. So number four is how to tell which days are holy days of obligation, aka which days that you as a Catholic are obligated to go to Mass. So there are six of these days throughout the year, plus every Sunday, because yes, every Sunday is a holy day. And it's always good to have these marked on your calendar because missing Mass without just cause is a grave sin. Now it can get a little bit tricky because sometimes these days will change and fluctuate depending on what diocese you're in. Sometimes a bishop will suspend the obligation if the holy day is on a Monday or he might move it if the holy day is on a Sunday. So if you get a little bit confused, you can always do a quick Google search for your diocese. You can ask your priest, you could call your church or you could just look in the bulletin even and see if it has a list of mass times. And don't worry, we will have the six holy days of obligation listed down below for you in case you need a refresher. Important skill number five is how to have a mass said for someone. Honestly, there is no greater gift that you can give a loved one than to have a mass said for them, but how do you go about setting that up? The quickest and easiest way to figure this out is to just call your church office, talk to the person on the phone who will be able to steer you in the right direction. Alternatively, you can go online and arrange to have a mass said there. There are different religious orders who offer this and then different Catholic religious websites like the Divine Mercy website. So I'll have that link below for you. Having a mass said for someone makes a fantastic gift. I mean, let's not wait till someone has died to have a mass said. You can have a mass said for their birthday or anniversary or first communion. Really, the possibilities are endless. So number six is what to do with religious items that you no longer want or that have been broken. So if you have a crucifix or a Bible that has been blessed, 
that is now a sacramental and that should never be thrown away or sold. So if you have a blessed item that you no longer want, your best option is to give it to a church or give it to someone else who would like that item. For example, our church every year has a religious articles exchange where we can donate the items that we don't want and then take anything that we might like completely for free. Now, if you have a blessed item that has been broken, it should be buried or burned. Again, never thrown away. Sometimes churches will have collections for these broken items so they can be disposed of properly. You can always call your church office and ask about that. Number seven is a skill that I think is extremely important and that is how to look up and find the official teachings of the Catholic Church. We actually have a book for that, The Catechism of the Catholic Church. And yet, when I bring this book out to my catechism classes, my seventh and eighth graders, a lot of them say, uh, we've never seen this book before. So definitely make sure your family and friends are aware that this is out there. It has an index in the back, so you can very quick and easily look up different Catholic topics like maybe divorce or fasting or what is a mortal sin and have your answer boom right here. And I do think that's really important because there's a lot of information information out there that is just not true about the Catholic Church and its teachings, so it's good to know how to get to the official source. There are different versions of the catechism that are age appropriate, good for all ages and stages. For instance, for kids, the Baltimore Catechism. We've got a couple for teenagers right here. There's even the Cliff Notes version if you're in a hurry. So whatever age you are, there's a book for you. We've got you covered. So number eight is knowing how to access all of your Catholic documents. So trust me, it's a great idea to know where all of these are and to have them in a safe place because sooner or later you will need them. For example, if you want to get married in the Catholic Church, then you will need your certificates from baptism, First Holy Communion, and confirmation. So now is a great time to ask, do you know where they are? Now, if you don't have the original documents, Knowing how to get a copy of them is also a valuable life skill. And usually that just involves calling the parish where you received the sacrament and requesting that they send you a copy. But sometimes that can be tricky. Sometimes, for example, the parish might no longer exist. And if that happens, the records from that closed parish are often transferred to the parish that took over that territory. So that's a good place to start looking. Number nine is what to do if you find a consecrated host in an unusual place. Now here I'm not talking about you go to communion and the host falls because usually there's a priest or a Eucharistic minister right there to take care of it. But what do you do if you go to the bathroom during church and there's a host on the counter or you're walking out to your car and you see one on the ground? Now that rarely, rarely happens, but if it does, you definitely need to know what to do. So recently I asked my seventh graders, what should you do? And they had no clue. So we reviewed it and I'll tell you what I told them. First, remember that if the host is consecrated, it is Jesus fully present, body, blood, soul, and divinity. So we want to treat that host with the utmost care, respect, reverence, and love. You're not going to walk away and just hope that someone else is going to take care of this. You want to reverently secure the host, then find someone who will know what to do. If you're a kid, alert your parents who can contact a priest or a Eucharistic minister. If it's at night, like say you're leaving youth group and you're the last one in the parking lot and there's no one around, well then you go back to tip number one, which is contact a priest because this is Jesus, this is an emergency. We want to make sure that we are treating Jesus with all the respect and love he deserves. So lastly, number 10 is how to go to adoration or more specifically, how to find your adoration chapel and how to get inside. So not every church has its own dedicated adoration chapel, but many of them do. And many of them also require some sort of key to get inside. So for example, our adoration chapel is open 24 seven and for safety's sake, it does require a key card to get inside. And not everybody realizes that. And some people are very frustrated when they can't just walk inside. So it's good to scope out the situation at your church Realize, do you need a key? Know where your adoration chapel is. 
because being able to visit Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament is a huge blessing and you don't want to miss out on that. Okay, so that is our list of 10 basic Catholic life skills that we think all Catholics should know. Now, there are definitely other worthy skills out there that maybe I could add to the list. So let me know down in the comments what you would add. So we hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.